Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is December 15th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Uh, let's take a look at the markets and then we'll jump into the trades for the week. Starting with the S&P, obviously the big news of the week, Wednesday, FOMC. Big move up in stocks. Inflation is dead. It is no longer, so we can just keep pushing to new all-time highs. Uh, so all, all green on the S&P for the week. NASDAQ had a little red day in there, but pretty much all up as well. Uh, Russell, a couple big moves on Wednesday and Thursday. A little bit of a pullback today. And the Dow hit new all-time highs again today. So just continuing to push to new all-time highs. Uh, gold, which hit a new all-time high last week, uh, retraced off that pretty quickly, settling in at about 2033. Uh, silver, a couple big up days this week. Notes and bonds pushing higher, uh, obviously with easing going on with the Fed, the 10-year yield coming down, settling in at 3.912 after hitting a high above 5 at the end of October. Oil. Uh, a little bit of a bounce this week. Natty gas, a little bit of a bounce this week. Soybeans, a little bit of a drop. Wheat, a little back and forth. Corn, a little choppy back and forth. Uh, the euro and the pound strong, U.S. dollar weak. And Bitcoin settling in at 42465 Pretty choppy. Uh, volatility, looking at VIX. Uh, even with stocks racing higher, volatility... Uh, Hovering above 12, didn't, didn't contract too much. Uh, so we'll see what, what comes of, of that here in the, in the uh, coming weeks. We are heading into the holidays here soon, so could get some more uh, volatility contraction going into Christmas. But we shall see. Um, all right, so that's the market. Let's take a look at our trades for the week. Uh, overall for the week, a little over 26000 and that's not really very reflective of my real trading. I'll point something out here. Full disclosure, I did have a $10,000 winner and that was a discretionary revenge trade. I, bl I blame that 100% on DitK. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. That was not part of my trade plan. It was a stupid trade. Dick is a bad influence. All right. So for the rest of my real trades, uh, let's go in and check out my zero DTE AM trades. This refresh. Uh, so minus 2300 on my AM trades. My Monday trade, which is my favorite one, in my biggest position, uh, ended up being a loser. It was so close to hitting my 50% profit target, and then it just ran away. So that is trading, but a little bit frustrating on that one. So close to being a winner. That was about a 10, 11, about $11,000 swing uh, from what it almost was to what it actually was. Uh, a couple other winners and another little scratch loser. So minus 2,300 on my AM trades. Uh, FOMC. So I took two FOMC trades. Uh, one was a FOMC uh, long strangle. And that booked a little over 3,700. My, uh, my iron condor that I trade during FOMC ended up being a $9,000 loser. Uh, that was is really partly mismanaged on my part. I wasn't paying attention to my longs, which lost their bid. So when I was trying to get out, it wasn't filling because I wasn't paying attention. So it could have, should have, would have been about a $6,000 loss. Ended up turning into a $9,000 loss. JSPs have been hitting. A couple, couple JSP winners. Uh, one for $1,600, one for $1,200. So a total of 2,800 on my JSPs. Power hour. Get all these clicked. All right, so for power hour on Monday, just did a small tranche three, booked a little winner. Uh, Tuesday, these are this is tranche two and three combined. It was about 1,100 bucks. Um, just the way the strikes kind of fell, I just merged them together. Uh, no, F, uh, no power hour on Wednesday with FOMC Thursday was really good. Uh, booked about 13,000. And then today all three tranches were losers, small loser on tranche one, full loser on tranche two, small loser on tranche three. 
Uh, still plus 8,700 on the week for Power Hour. And on my PM, my afternoon trades. Just did two of those, one for 2,600, one for minus 600, so about 2,000 in profits on those. And then my quiet lunch trades, my midday. Four trades, one loser, uh, almost 7,000 on my uh, quiet lunch, so those continue to do well. Reverse iron condors, those have been good all week, except for today. And these are all discretionary. They're not really setting up based on the implied volatility, current implied volatility levels. But uh, I've been taking some discretionary ones. Three of them were winners. And then um, the one today has, isn't showing up uh, because it'll settle overnight. I let it expire. Um, so it's showing $3,300 in profits. Today's will be about a $4,000 loser. So that net-net, those will actually be about uh, minus 700 on the week. For my Ricks, uh, no time flies closed. Yeah, just a couple additions there, but no, no closed trades there. Calendars had all good calendars except for one. Had another loss on a TGIF, and every other one was a winner. Let me get all these checked. Give it a little refresh. So, yeah, you can see over 2,100 in profits, and that's including a $3,000 loss on a TGIF. So everything else continues to do really well, except just cannot get a win on a TGIF to save our lives. I mean, that's not true. We have had a little bit, but net-net, they've been pretty bad this year. Um, option, oh, Iron Duck had one Iron Duck winner, 130 bucks. Uh, option selling, I don't think I closed any of these. Yeah, these are just a couple of credits that were booked with adjustments, uh, but no closing trades on option selling. And then portfolio margin overall down a about 3000 on the week, if I remember correctly. Yeah, minus 3400 uh, Had a... Uh, Ratio diagonal, there's a piece of that that's going to settle overnight here. So that'll end up being about a $1,200 winner instead of 13. Um, small scratch win on a reverse vertigo. Small scratch win on a Humpty. $2,500 loss on a call swoosh. $1,600 loss on a time fly. $720 loss on a reverse vertigo. And a small scratch on Humpty. So that is it. Uh, still profitable for the week. So not too shabby. Um, it was good to see a little bit of premiums come in from FOMC. Hopefully we can get some more next week. Not likely, but you never know. So everybody have a good weekend. We'll talk to you next week.